Break your Bible if you've got one to 1 Samuel chapter 20. We'll read verse 18. We'll jump to 24 to 33. We'll read verse 18 first, then we'll jump to 24. Then if I read 24, we'll read 18 together. Then I'll read, I'll start with 24, then you read the next one, I'll read the next one. We'll get to 33, we'll read it together. Let's read 18 together, one to go. Then Jonathan said to who? David, tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. Move to verse 24. I'll read it, then you read the other. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat. Read verse 25. Twenty-six. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something had befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. Jonathan answered, Saul, David earnestly asked to leave of me to go to Bethlehem. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said to him, Thou son of the perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that thou art choosing the son of Jesse to thy own confusion, and unto thy confus the confusion of thy mother's nakedness. Read verse 31. Jonathan answered Saul his father and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What had he done? Let's read verse 33 together. And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him, whereby Jonathan knew it was determined of his father to slay David. Are you ready for prayer this morning? I want to share what I titled, O oh Lord, empty my seat of death. O oh Lord, empty my seat of death somebody say it loud oh lord shout it loud and clear shout it loud and clear empty my seat of death empty my seat of death oh my god you didn't say that well empty my seat of death Where you will sit and you are killed, you will not sit there. Amen. I said, the seat where you will sit and your life is terminated, you will not sit there. Hey. You will not sit there. Hey. Take your seat. The Bible began by saying to us. That David hid himself in the field. David hid himself in the field. David hid himself where? 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the field is an open place. How do you hide yourself in an open place? Now, if the Bible had said David hid himself in the house, you didn't get that. David, to hide yourself in the field is to be in the midst of people, but yet you have a mind of your own. To hide 
Jesus in the fact is that you are friends. Open by your friend. But in your heart, you know that these ones are not your friends. To hide yourself in the field is to understand that you can have people smiling at you, laughing at you, laughing with you, but that does not mean you open your heart and begin to tell them all the information about your life. I'm not speaking to somebody here. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 2 and verse 2 that the mother of Moses hid Moses because they knew he was a proper child. They hid him, they hid him, they hid him. In Joshua chapter Two. The Bible says when spies came into the house of Rehab, she hid them in the roof. In first case, she put in the straw. A man called Obadiah, he hid 100 prophets inside the cave. In John chapter 8, verse 59, the Bible said Jesus hid himself and went out. How do you hide yourself and you go out? Jesus hid himself. And pass through their midst. How do you hide yourself and yet you are passing through the midst of people? John 8 59, they took up stones and cast at him. He said, But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through their midst. Uh, he, he was disguised. Meaning, he was passed. You can't be for you to be looking for somebody and the person is passing and you cannot touch him. It means he is passing without you knowing he's the one. Can I pray for you? Whoever is waiting for you, you will pass them and they will not recognize you. <laughs> Whoever is waiting for you, for this is for the best food I miss, they will not identify you. For the best food I miss, they will not recognize you. For the best food I miss, they will not know you. For the best food I miss, they will not see you. As many as I connect into this prophecy, I'm the girl who shall be invisible. 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 Who will pass through their lips. Who will not see you. Who will pass through their lips. Who shall not hang you. Who will pass through their lips. Who cannot hurt you. Who will pass through their lips. Who cannot sense you. Who will pass through their lips. Who cannot explain you. Who will fall on them. Who said I'm not to God? Who's the son of the God? Who's the son of the God? Who's the son of the God? When God says yes, when man can say no, when God moves up, when man can bring it down, God is on your side. 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 Who said I'm such a son? Son of such a son. Son of such a son. If you watch the London program, I gave a prophecy concerning a person who had a case on the 2nd of June. I said, There's a lady here, you have a case on the 2nd of June. A lady came out. She was called by the police that she had a case with the police on the 2nd of June. And in the U.S., most countries in Europe, police case is not like Nigeria. It's not like Nigeria. If you fall into the trap of the police, you are in trouble. You can dent your record. In Nigeria, they say, bring your driver's license. They keep it after a while they give you. Abroad, they seize it once. They reduce your point. Am I correct of you live in Europe? They reduce your point. And when they reduce your point to a level, you can't drive again. Yeah, they have seized many drivers last more than 20 times. And they'll give you back. It's not so abroad. So, I get the word by the Spirit of God that the case comes up 2nd of June. And we pray. As service was end ending, she walked out. Miss Call was on her phone. Same service. She was confused. It was the police. Now, the police don't, don't relate with you much. They relate with your lawyer. They relate with your lawyer. It was the police that called her phone by themselves. She didn't pick. Because her heart beat. So she called her lawyer in the morning. The lawyer said, yes, call them and hear what happened. The police called her and said, the case is cancelled. <laughs> by themselves. That is not normal abroad. Police cancel. Come to the station. If they see you free, you go. If you are not free, you stay. For police to call your phone. 
those who live in Europe and America can understand what I'm saying. To call you and say your case is can, can I cancel some cases? Help! 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 Take your seat. Take your seat. The place where we read. Let me give you a background story so you understand it. There was a festival. The festival that everybody celebrates. Then there's the festival of the Pentecost, the feast of the Passover. All of those were not celebrated by everybody. They were celebrated by the Jews. But there were several celebrations that concern whether you are a non-believer, you are a Jew, you are anything. Everybody must gather to celebrate it. One of them was called the feast of new moon. New moon was a feast that everybody celebrates and they appreciate God for giving them light. Because that's what the moon gives a reflection of light so that period all the people who are in security the king David was like the chief of staff Jonathan was the head of the throne Abner was the CSO or the NSA national security advisor all of those people had their seats there and thousands probably millions will sit and be looking at them the new moon was coming David and Jonathan were discussing. And he said, tomorrow is the new moon. There will be a seat for you. David perceived. He said, I'm not going to sit down there. He said, because your father may plan to kill me there. But you look at this. This is the irony. That was supposed to be a celebration. If you want to kill people as a king, you should do that secretly. Without leaving traces. But he said, I'm not going to attend them because your father can kill me publicly. So what do I do? I will not sit on that seat. Because that seat is a trap to take my life. Tell somebody, my seat of death must be empty. Oh, you are not saying that way. Say, my family's seat of death will be empty. Saul had planned to take David's life. But while Saul was planning, David was planning write this down God is always ahead of the devil God is always ahead before the devil planned God has planned God is always ahead of the devil the planner has been planned <laughs> that's deep right the planner has been what God is the master planner that plans the planner God is the master planner that planned to kill people had already seen in one step of one there was a divine inspiration listen to me if there is a plan against your life if there is a plan against your job if there is a plan against your home if there is a plan against your finances if there is a plan against your children if there is a plan against your ministry if there is a plan because I will do God will move ahead of that plan God will move ahead of that plan God will move ahead of that plan God will move ahead of Take your seat We serve a God of power and dominion The Bible calls him the beginning and what? The beginning and Alpha and 
I'm from what? I'm from what? Alpha is who he is. Omega is what he does. He is alpha. Alpha means beginning. Omega means end. He is not end. God is not end. God is endless. God is not the end. When he said the beginning and the end, it means the end that you can think about. Where you think he ends is where he ends. Oh. God has no end. Bible calls, even the Bible calls Melchizedek Metri- Metri- the, 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 the one that has no beginning, no end. Melchizedek was the type of Christ. So God has no end. So when he said the beginning and the end, it's because as a human being, you think there is something that has an end. So if you think he ends, he ends. But God actually is endless. So end is not who he is. End is what he does. If he finishes something, it is finished. That's what I mean by Alpha and Omega. Is the beginning, the end. Meaning, if you if, oh, Alpha is who he is. Omega is what he does. That's why this Omega Fire Ministries mean the end of affliction, the end of pain, the end of struggle. Once you come here, problem end, affliction end, challenge end. I might come here from where? David with a falling victim. God is ahead of the devil. They plan you are going to cross a charm. I like what Zechariah said. They will plan against a host. They will troop against a city. He said, that's for me, not me. Some of the halal, not me. Maybe they drop the charm on the ground. And they say, as you are coming to school, you are about to enter class. As you cross the charm, something will happen to you. Something will say, not me. Not me. Maybe they, they pick a call. And they dial the number and begin to make incantation. But as soon as you respond to the call, something will happen to your ears. Something will not me. Not me. Maybe they say this is examination period. They will give you a pen. As you use the pen to write exam, you begin to forget all you write. Something will not me. Not me. Maybe they give you something to wear. And the first to wear this to your door will be taken or diverted. How about not me? Not me. Maybe they blow a powder and they call your name right in the house, in your room, and they project into your life. Somebody how about not me? Not me. Maybe they have a glass, a crystal, and the crystal, they watch and they project things. And they bear the name of your family members that they want to get to them. for then I'll go into the main the main message I'm trying to introduce it the third thing I saw <laughs> Saul was sitting down he had a javelin by his side and he made sure that David's seat was close to a wall javelin wall what is that for to pin him to the wall. We'll get there. But that's not my point. Now, my point is, while he was there, sitting by him was Abner. Abner was his CSO or NSA, Chief Security Officer or National Security Advisor. Abner was a killer. So why Saul put him there was that in case he miss it, Abner cannot miss it. Ah, nobody's following what I'm saying. Every enemy has a backbone. Nobody's hearing me this morning. Can I preach like a preacher? Every enemy has a backbone. That is why when Hannah was worshiping God on the day Samuel was dedicated, they said, God has triumphed gloriously. The horses and its rider as it turned into the sea. For every horse, there is a rider. For every back, there is a backbone. I must put on here. For everyone boasting, there is somebody behind him. For every soul, there is an abner by the side. 
God, but I thank God for the Almighty God, as God Jehovah Rafa, my God or as my provider, as God Jehovah Samar, the rain or as my peace, as God Jehovah Rafa, the rain that is my banner, as God Jehovah Tekina, the rain that is my righteousness, the God Jehovah Samar, Mr. Buskin, the rain that is the Saint of Fire, as God Jehovah Nehru Shabbat, the one that delivers by prophecy. I am here to speak to my life. It doesn't matter the backbone of your enemy. There is a big God that can break the backbone of the enemies of your life. There is a big God that can break the backbone of the enemies of your ministry. There is a big God that can break the backbone of the enemies of your soul. There is a big God that can break the backbone of the enemies of your profession. There is a big God that can break the backbone of the enemies of your finances. There is a big God that can break the backbone of the attackers of your life. Take your seat one minute. Look at what he said. Look at what he said. Look at what Saul said. When Saul was insulting, I'll pick this point, then I'll go, for, I'll go further. When Saul was insulting um, Jonathan, hear what he said. This is, this is bad. You know what he said? He said, you are the son of a rebellious woman. You are not ashamed. You are busy exposing your mother's nakedness. How did mother come in here? No, how did mother come in? Eh? Does that tell you something? Every father who has no regard for a mother, we have no value for the children. The way your father treats your mother is a reflection of what he feels about you. No, isn't it? Did you read the Bible? To insult them, you see, the father was ready to put him to death. Fathers need to understand how you treat your wife is a reflection of how your children see you. I wish I was communicating. Whoever has no value for, uh, has no regard for a mother has no value for the children. Why insulting the mother in public? What did she do? So this is an awakening. Eh? When you show love to your wife, you, you, you are displaying value for them. You can't tell, you can't tell your children that you tell your wife, the little that concerns me and you is these children. Nothing should concern you and her. Because the children came from my loins. Am I communicating? So if the woman is not good enough, the children should not be good enough. This is sober. This is sober. It's not a shout. It's sober. You hear a man who has not shown concern, contributed a dime to a child's life, January to December. How do you feel? You say, I don't have. But you are eating. You are buying clothes. You are buying clothes. Am I communicating? So how do you treat them? A full year. One full year. Please tap that brother to listen to the message. It's not time to pray. We'll pray later. Tap him. A full year. One year has 12 months. January to December. 12 months. One year has 365 days. One year has 8,760 hours. One year has 31,536,000 seconds.
One year. And throughout that one year, not one contribution from father to child. You know, even when, even when children are married, eh? when children are married, sometimes when they still visit their parents, their parents still give them full stops. You may not have all they need, but show them through the little you do that if you have had all they need, you would have helped them. Through the little. Because there are fathers from the way they behave. You know, there are children who are praying that God bless my father, bless my father. There are some who are not praying for God to bless their father. Because they know even if God bless him, it will help them. Because from their attitude, <laughs> from their attitude now, from the little they have, the man doesn't do anything. So, I can tell you now that men are not writing anything as I'm talking now. I know something, a, a man is here, Papa, okay, sorry, right, next point, next point. <laughs> but I've got to tell you the truth. I've got to tell you what I do. Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Show care. You're angry with your, angry with your wife. You have extended it to your children. Amen. I'm teaching you by my life. Show concern. Treat their mother well. The children will love you. You know, if children gang up against you as a father, you are finished. Oh. They won't talk. Oh. They just conspire. Say, this man will, will show me. Mm. Father, don't worry. Say, yeah, say, we'll show him. Say, you don't go, don't near that, don't near that house again. Don't greet him. Oh. If you get to one of us, we'll just pass in front of him like this. Am I, am I counseling somebody this morning? Huh? Show love, show concern, show concern, show concern. A family where you have the father, the mother living in love and peace, the atmosphere is wonderful. Do you know the way you treat your wife can affect your prayer? The Bible says, deal with women according to knowledge that your prayers be not hindered. So if you treat your wife foolishly, your prayers. So there, is, there, is, there are angels that enter a house. They check your righteousness, they check your tithe, they check your offering, and they check your wife before they answer your prayer. They will check your wife. Your wife is ang I don't know. There are pastors who can preach if their wife is unhappy. Me, I know fit all. I can't. I can't. Me, climb on the altar. And I, me and my wife, we, we didn't talk. I can't let the message go to hell. We'll preach it another time. Settle the issue on ground first. That is why if I'm preaching, my wife is the number one fan. Because I made peace before climbing the altar. There's nothing to quarrel about. Even. We have never quarreled. Say, we, there are people, they'll stay a whole day. I've never, since I got married. My wife and I, we have an issue. Morning, evening, we don't talk. Why? Even if you're angry, talk about it. Even if you are angry, talk about it. Hello? <laughs> All right. All right. How do I explain? But you understand what I'm talking about? Very important. Never begin to live a life of peace. Life of love. Number one! was sensitive if your seat of death must be empty be sensitive somebody has sensitive in these days of fall down and die there are less sensitive people and very aggressive people in these days of fall down and die there are many warriors and militants and few calm Christians in these days of fall down and die, slap me, I slap you. Kick me, I kick you, Bible Church. Shoot me, I shoot you, Bible Church. Also known as Satan. You decree it? <laughs> Head me, I heard you, intercessive ministry. Also known as, also known as, not let them rest. <laughs> 
Am I talking to somebody? <laughs> you have don't fear the devil killing by force, also known as nothing they happen. <laughs> you have all kinds of church. Only few people hear the message of sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Sensitive. How did David know that there was a death trap waiting for him? No man gave him the information. It was by the sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. There are times as a child of God before you go on a journey, check if your spirit agrees. Some of you are, you are, you are about going out. You feel so tired. Even sometimes you want to go somewhere to even rise up and take your bath is like walk. That's already the spirit of God trying to stop you from a journey. Nalao, you force yourself. I go bath this bath. <laughs> Am I communicating here? Something inside you is just tired. You are going to go check somebody to stand up from the bed or stand up from the chair. You feel the spirit of God is, is making you heavy. That's an instruction for you not to go. Am I communicating? Many times when we fall into traps, God either spoke to us or God warned us before or God implanted it and imprinted it in our intuition, in our spirit. But we are too... The church of this day, we teach people aggressive to be aggressive not knowing that even in the military they are calculative when nations go to war after a while they go on break you know why number one they go on break to assess casualties are we losing more than they are losing number two they go on break to replenish because they need more bullets more bombs more foods Number three, they go on break, which is very important, to re-strategize. If you have been doing it this way, it's not working more. Let's see how we can re-strategize. Number four, they go on break to re-examine if the war is even worth it. This thing we are fighting for, is it worth the lives? Some of us, we just keep fighting. We never go back to re-strategize. There are some enemies you kill. There are some enemies you ignore. I told you there are two kinds of enemies. There are local enemies, very local, primitive witch, very local witch. And there are enemies of destiny. Primitive and local enemies are those who are angry. Petty jealousy. You bought a shoe, I don't have one. You bought a shirt, I don't have one. You are just raining. They can't do nothing against you. All they show is envy. You don't kill such people. No, you don't kill them. Let them be there. Because that is the assignment to be watching you prosper. If you prosper, and nobody's watching you. What kind of prosperity is that? There are some people that must be on ground to be assessing you. But the enemies that should be judged are those who are after your life. Am I communicating where? Sensitive. Today, the church. The message of the end time. The message of the end time pastors is a message of kill the enemy, bury the enemy, bomb the enemy. Am I talking to somebody here? Which is not bad, but they forget that you must also tell the people about the Holy Spirit. There are times to be quiet and listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. You don't win all battles by fighting. There are some battles you win by silence. You don't answer everybody. Only a madman answers everybody. Even many madmen now, they ignore. Have you not seen a madman that bones? They say, I'm fool, idiot, madman. You just look at you. You say one or two this again, madman look at you. See, look at him. He's carrying food from the dustbin. He'll look at you. <laughs> I 
which I was making the point here. If you read from verse 5 to verse 7, from verse 5 of that portion, he said, David said to Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon. I should not fail to sit at the king's, with the king at meat, but let me go that I may hide myself in the field until the third day. I should. Eh? The word should is highly probabilistic. I should, number one. In other words, listen before you write this down. In other words, this is what I'm supposed to do. I am supposed, as the chief of staff, I'm supposed to be by the king. I should. But because I'm sensitive, I would not. I should not. Meaning, sensitive men don't follow protocol. Men who are sensitive don't follow protocols. They break protocol. I don't mean church protocol. Though. I don't mean protocol department. I mean rules, regulations, the way it is done. Am I communicating? When a man is sensitive to the Holy Spirit, there are terms the man does. When a man is sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you bring food before him and you expect him to eat the food and so that he can poison and take his life. He will allow you to serve the food. He will allow you to dish the food. He will just eat you over the food and at the end he will walk away from the food. He will stop you from dishing the food. He will allow you to do everything. When you expect him to eat, he will not eat anything. People who are of the Spirit do not follow protocol. You can tell them all that people said about them. And at the end, you expect them to respond. They will not say one word. Because they are not people who follow rules and regulation. Some of you say, Apostle, it is the protocol of our family that every December, all the children must come home for Christmas. The sensitive men, they don't wait for you to expect them. They come when you are not expecting them. They don't follow protocol. They don't follow pattern. Am I communicating here? They don't follow protocol. You plan to beat up a sensitive person after examination. And you expect that after the exam, you should stay back in school. You should stay back in class to read for the next day. But a person is sensitive to the Holy Spirit as he's submitting his script, walking out of the class, is going home because they don't follow protocol. Men who are sensitive, my Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Lift up your hands and shout for the Lord. Maturity. Romans, Romans 8, 14. Romans 8, 14 and Romans 8, 16. Let's read Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the what? Sons of God. Okay, read verse 16. Verse 16, 1 6. He said, For the Spirit is said, Bear the witness that we are the children. Let me explain. As many as are led by the Spirit, they are the what? The Spirit bear the witness that we are what? Children. Children live by witness, sons live by leading. What is witness? How many of you certain things? Look at me before you write. How many of you certain things have happened? When it just happened, say, Chai, this thing came to my mind before. See, as I was praying, I was feeling, hey, I was feeling, hey, I wanted to say it, but how many of you that has happened? You are a child. Without witness, witness. You don't know whether or not God, you don't know whether or not devil, you won't talk calm, you not talk calm, your mind, they tell you, your mind, no, they tell you. Somebody say, pray for this person, pray. You didn't pray. By the next day, you heard the person is dead. You're like, oh, yesterday I was hearing one voice. Has it happened to you? Ah. That's witness. You are still a child. But leading, they hear him. You are his son. As many as are led by the Spirit. This one, not be one voice they tell them. They know the voice. The thing leads them. Which I was communicating. It leads them. Stop following protocol. That somebody told you everything being said about you doesn't mean you should also open your mouth and start saying things. That's time you're done. You say thank you. Don't go by the expectation of men. Number two, as a chief of staff, David will sit down 
on that throne, on the seat, because he's supposed to be the next king by prophecy. He needs to buy the heart of the people by sitting on that seat. Am I communicating here? Eh? Because the oil has come upon his head that he was going to be the next king. So he needed to sit on that seat to start buying the heart of people. Sensitive men don't cut corners. They don't cut corners. They don't play games. Men that walk by the Spirit of God, they depend only on the Spirit. They don't play games. They don't cajole people. They don't impress people. When the Holy Spirit is the one moving them and using them, they are not interested in playing around games. They walk by the Spirit of God. Because if God is the one that put the oil on your head, that you are going to be a king, you don't need to cut corners. When God campaigns for you, even the devil we vote for you. Am I communicating here? If God is your campaigner, if God is the director of your campaign, even the devil will be forced to vote for you. Men who are sensitive do not cut corners. Men who are sensitive do not check what we people say. If I don't appear now, what will they say? Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Now, let hear this. Then in Israel, if you don't sit on your spot, your seat will be given to another. David knew the risk, but yet he stayed away. When the Holy Spirit is the one directing you, no one can take your place. Now, watch this. If you read that portion, the Bible didn't say on David's seat. It said on David's place. Eh? Did you read that? And David's place. And David's place. And David's place. When it is your place, nobody can take it. Oh. 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 Can I talk to you? If somebody took a job you were expecting, it was never your job. If somebody took your fiance or your fiancé, it was never your fiance or your fiancé. Never call a person more than two times. That's respectful. Call once or twice and leave the call. Not you must call. So they, you must pick this phone today. Uh, pick the phone. How you like it or not today. You say you don't want to pick my call. You will pick today. Mm -hmm. You must pick today whether you like it or not. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't pick. I will kill your battery. I will kill your battery. <laughs> That's a lunatic. Sensible people don't. Ah, oh, God of mercy. But am I saying the truth? Man, somebody has called me 189 times. Finally, I picked. I said, What is it? Is that you, Apostle Suleiman? I said, yes, it's okay, call me back. Let me tell you my problem. Call me back. <laughs> Number two. I like this one. Only God, God knows the heart of men. Only God. A man's heart is not on his face. Only God. The Bible says, and Saul that wanted to kill David, all of a sudden they began to ask after David like he cared. Uh -uh, where is David? Meanwhile, his heart was only God. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. The heart of man is deceitful. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who who can never know the heart of a wife, wife, I'm talking of wife, who can know the heart of a husband, who can know the heart of a brother or a sister, nobody can know the heart of a man, only God knows the heart of people, I have seen people smile at people and yet destroy the people, I have seen people buy gifts for people and yet the gifts are the charm in it, I can tell you about the heart of man, I can tell you about the heart of people, 
are leading a generation that when somebody is too happy with you, suspect that person. When somebody becomes too happy with you, you have to suspect such a person. When somebody, when an enemy suddenly becomes a friend, you have to watch out. Somebody doesn't talk to you, all of a sudden begins to check on you. Please run for your life because that is not a new friendship. That is a trap that you are about to enter. When an enemy suddenly becomes a friend, watch out that this is my confidence. A thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, and who shall not come near you. Go out your arm and you behold. I see the reward of the wicked. It doesn't matter who is planning, it doesn't matter who is conspiring. Who will ever come there? Only God knows the heart of man. A brother was a brother was angry at his younger brother. What did the younger brother have that he didn't have? A supermarket. The supermarket was booming. He was angry. He organized assassins. And the assassin said, we will go and kill him on one condition. You will follow us so that you can identify him. That supermarket is always crowded, even at night. He said, go around 12, 12 midnight. He said, even 12, people are knocking there to buy things. And go around one. He said, don't argue. Just follow us. Point him. He followed them. And saw about four people. He was pointing. They said, which one? Point. They said, go closer. So, as stupid as he was, he removed his mask and pointed. And they killed his brother. The next day in the morning, he was the first to go to the house to cry. People were in, do you this? Oh, enemy. After six months after the burial, he felt sick. You know, God is a pay master. You can't do evil and go free. That's why I tell people, when people do evil, don't bother to even pray. It will catch up with them. Don't waste your prayer praying against them, binding them. No. Quiet. After I first sick, they give an injection. You know, waiting they find blood, not they take oil. After the while he was about to die, he called his children. And said, the reason I'm sick. Okay. According to the story, he killed, he pointed, he killed the elder brother and killed the wife. So he told his children and said, the reason I'm dying now is because of what I did to my elder brother and his wife. After confession, he died. He said to them, return all that I took from them. But the truth is, if you return all, can you return their life? That is why when I see armed robbers who have killed people, say they are sorry. I say sorry. I don't understand. Are you saying now saying sorry and you'll be free? Eh, no problem. Sorry, but die they die. So you have an ex. No, I say sorry. Okay, sorry that word that they should not leave you. The most rascally set of people in a ministry are those who already have access to pulpits. Very rascally. And that's why if they are in churches like that, I always put them in check. Because I know that thing that wants to destroy them. Ron Kenoni was invited to preach, to sing somewhere. And he told the person, he said, I will give you an answer. He said, I'm free on that date, but I'll check something and give you an answer. I said, what? He said, I need to check if my pastor will release me. Ron Kenoni is 70 plus. But today somebody can disappear from here. Where you go? I go sing. No permission, no blessing, no backup. I'm telling you, and let me tell you, people like that, guess what? They, they just rise. Hallelujah. I told one of my sons yesterday, as if a father is advising you, even if you are innocent, take the advice. 
So we have to grow. And this is one thing that has destroyed the church. No roots, no foundation. Check flowers that spring suddenly. They die suddenly. Flowers die cheaply. You know why? They grow so fast. Check palm trees. They take time. You can't see palm tree falling on its own. Somebody has to cut it. Which I was talking here. Number two. I said only God knows the heart of man. If you read verse 26. When they were waiting for David to come there. In our contest. First Samuel 20. If you read verse 26. When they were waiting for David to come to his seat. Guess what Paul said? Saul said, Saul said, he's not here. Maybe he's not clean. That's why he's not here. I'm sure he's unclean. See the man that is assessing who is clean. <laughs> You're not getting this message. He was saying, oh, David is not sitting here because normally before you assess the height, you have to be purified. He was saying somebody is not clean. And yet he that is clean had a javelin. <laughs> oh, I wish you understand this message. He said, David is not sitting down here because David is unclean. Okay, you that is clean and sitting, you have a javelin to kill somebody. Write this down. Those judging you are not qualified. sister is committing immorality. You talking, are you free from immorality? That brother is a thief. You, the phone in your hand, who gave you? Those judging you are not qualified. Jesus said, in this world, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. The Bible says they, they drop their stones from the eldest to the youngest, meaning they were guilty. Now, when Jesus said he that is without sin, cast the first stone, I told you what the first stone means. The first stone speaks of Goliath. He that has not conquered his own Goliath, don't make reference here. He that is without this kind of sin of adultery, any of you that is not doing the same thing, stone her. So all of them were guilty of the same thing that they were arrested. Now the truth in church is that many people are guilty, but only few are caught. It is the one that are caught that we think are guilty. Uh, The thief that is caught is a criminal. The thief that is not caught is a sharp guy. Nobody's following me here. Nobody's following me here. Many, many. That is why when people are angry, oh, this brother did this, this sister did this, and you are angry, 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 angry. Once in a while, I ask myself, what is the motivation for this anger? Uh, is it that you are now Jesus, the Son of God, that is angry at people's sin, or there is something that is making you angry? You just want to get back at this person. You just want to deal with this person. Listen to me. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Leave people's issue in hand. Bible says, look at what the Bible says. John was speaking. He said, he that is a thief, let him continue stealing. Revelation. He that is a thief, continue stealing. He that is a killer, continue killing. That's what he said. In other words, it is your business. John was saying he's pursuing his own. Work out your own salvation. Let every man say in the call wherein he is called. It doesn't matter what you are doing. I am more interested in myself. You know, I hardly advise people now. I don't advise people. I just preach the gospel, come to church, hear my messages. My message are tonics of life. 
If you listen to my people, listen to my message who are not Christians, just to know how to live. They just know. I know many politicians who tell me on Sunday, I don't go anywhere. I just sit down. He said, I'm taking notes about life from your message. Many. Many. I don't advise people. Because whoever needs to learn from beating does not learn from counsel. He must be beaten to learn. What Koboko needs to do, advice cannot do. But the truth is that not everybody survives experience. How can you be advising a person who has not advised himself? Hello? If you don't learn as a young lady, you are in school. You leave school. You hang on the streets. You don't learn from HIV. You don't learn from venereal infection. You don't even learn from carryover. You don't learn from advice to withdraw. Is it me that will not teach you? There is a time when you are married. If you want to stand on the street with your husband, you can stand on the town. Nobody cares. But there is a time for that. Am I communicating here? Number three. I'm talking about the heart of men. Saul was ready to kill David in public. Ladies and gentlemen, evil-minded people have no shame. Evil-minded people. You are a king. You want to kill your chief of staff in public. You are not thinking what people will say. You are not thinking how people will feel. You are not thinking what people will consider. People have no shame. That is why a wicked man can beat up his wife in public. Not knowing that he is the one that is more disgraced than the wife that is naked. Evil people have no shame. That is why you have money and your daughter has not paid her fees. And you can sit down in a beer parlor and you are drinking when your daughter is about writing exams with that school fees paid. You have no shame as a woman. When you look at your husband insulting publicly because he has no money, because of his condition you insult and arouse an evil minded people have no sin when you see people open their mouth and say things about people you ask yourself how can this person say this thing don't you have sin don't you have conscience evil minded people have no sin they don't care to be disgraced for somebody to be destroyed am I cutting with somebody here you can hear somebody say certain dangerous things that never happened but just because there is a backup behind that person. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a sinless generation. A sinless generation. A very degenerate generation. That is the generation that we live in. No shame. You want to kill somebody, a king, at your level. You want to pin your chief of staff to the wall. You don't care how people see you. You don't care what people say. Somebody will sit down. You see a, a, a person that goes to a church. We sit down in a beer panel. We have people that know him as a member are passing. And he'll drink. Anybody when you look me, my eye gets. No shame. You drive your car with I am an Omega child sticker. To go and buy weed. And people see you with weed and see the car. In fact, you even sat on the bonnet of the car and you rested on the windscreen. By your side was the sticker. In your mouth is the weed. You know the shame. You are a young lady. The quarter you normally visit, all the young men there are Yahoo boys. And you wear wristband and enter there. They say, look at your wrist. Say, yes, so. I'm a omega shy. I'm a omega shy. I'm a omega shy. 
you know get shame Am I communicating here? Look at the nonsense I'm hearing. How people are getting people pregnant in the name of we are engaged. Any man that pregnates you before marriage will never respect you. you should be ashamed. He will never. I'm telling you, forget whatever I tell you. Now mistake, now devil walk. Which devil? Devil pull your trouser. Huh? Now your walk. Not be devil. Now your walk. Devil is walking his walk. You are walking your walk. It's your walk. Devil carried you into a room. Devil pull your trousers. Devil told you lie down. Devil. People make mistakes. I hear they say, Papa, people have made mistakes. Let them be. No problem. You get somebody pregnant before marriage, who will forgive you? But I will never bless you. That's the truth. I'll forgive you, but you have lost. Go to scriptures. You get somebody pregnant, you must marry that person. That's what the Bible says in Israel. If you marry the person, the church will not bless you. We will forgive you, but we can't bless you. If you are doing a service or so, we can't attend. You may not like my message, but it's okay. It's okay. If you don't like it here, I'll preach it abroad. Thank God there are many platforms where, <laughs> where they will accept my message. I'm saying this to put the fear in you. So there are certain things that will give you consciousness. We'll forgive you, but will not bless you. So all those of you are already planning. Hey, Papa, and the father, the, the, if we don't get, they get pregnant, the father will not agree. So you have to kidnap somebody's child for the person to agree. It's terrible. And that's exactly what nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to talk about it. That somebody wants to marry a sister and the sister is already living in your house. You see, you see, fiance and fiancé, they have become roommates. And you want to get married? And you expect the man to respect you. He has not paid your bride price, you cook for him. He has not paid your bride price, you wash his clothes. He has not paid your bride price, you sweep his house. He has not paid your bride price, you cut his fingernail. He has not paid your bride price, you comb his hair. Why should you pay your bride price? We have done everything now. Now, let me say something. Even ladies and boys in the world are almost wiser than people in the church. You see a girl who is worldly. Say, come to my house. Say, for what? To do what? Ah, uh -uh. Come and stay with me. Say, for what? I can't come. Unbelievable. Tell Christian sister, come to your house. Eh. Are you sure we'll not do something? <laughs> we'll not do anything, no. We'll not do anything, no. I'll come. Don't forget to be a prayer band member. I'm a prayer band member. Won't do anything. Papa, no. Papa, we trust ourselves. We are both born again. I agree and I trust you too. Me, I trust you. You are both born again. But the room is not born again. The bed is not born again. The life is not born again. The environment is not born again. So you that is born again, don't go around the place that is not born again. I trust you. No, I trust you. I know you. I know you are a reverend sister. You are a reverend father. I trust you. But I don't trust that place you are going. Because people that enter there, they change their mind. So if it's you, I trust you. It's the place I don't trust. So don't go there. Clap your hands for Jesus. Can I pray? Are you getting something? Hey, look at this. Everybody gathered to prepare for new moon. 
Saul gathered to prepare, prepare for burial. Let me advise you. Be careful of events. Birthday, housewarming, anniversary, burial anniversary, sadaka. <laughs> Be careful of events. It's not all burials you must attend. You didn't kill the person. Not all barriers. There are events. As a pastor, I can shock you. Not all programs you minister in. There are programs you attend, your oil dies. I've seen many. I've seen one of my son was carried from the poopy to the psychiatric home. Nobody fast like that guy. Fast like a fasting machine. Studies the Bible like internet. Sharp in praying in tongues. But there are things that caution can do that fasting can do caution be careful of events not all birthdays should command your presence you are doing a birthday oh, okay when is the birthday two days times okay i'll see you tomorrow please this is my gift oh. you won't come for the birthday say i can't oh, but this is my gift i might tell you to be superstitious no i'm telling you to be sensitive Everybody was praying, looking forward to a new moon festival. And Saul was looking forward to David's burial. I can give you an example. In Matthew chapter 6, Herod was doing his birthday. As we were looking forward to his birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced. And the father said, what do I give you? He said, give me the head of John the Baptist. Bring it on a charger. Put it on a charger. Am I communicating here? Many people have gone to events and their body change. Many have gone to places as they sat on the chair. Their body system change. Some have entered into places as they go for celebration. People have attended a wedding and somebody hugged them and things change. Some people have gone to weddings and they hired photographers just to target somebody. And snap that person and give me his picture. I will pay you anything. I'm not talking to somebody here. Be careful of events. Our people invite you to places. VIPs don't go everywhere. There are places invite the president. He will never come. He will send a representative. But today, Christian, we go anywhere. In fact, they don't even give you card. Now mouth. They said this is not 30 card for my wedding. 30. Your name not there. Show you come. They address the card to somebody they feel is important. But you, they invite you verbally. Because to them, or you know, anywhere. Be careful of events. I pray for you. If they have planned to kill you in an event, they have planned to backfire. If they have planned to kill you in an event, they have planned to fail. I told us a story about a young, young lady. I remember then when we were younger, in the archbishop, in the church then, she was in the choir. Man, this girl can sing. Jesus. The archbishop, the archbishop gave her scholarship. If I want the archbishop to see you are gifted, we'll just take off your education. He'll push you to education. This girl can sing. Jesus. So growing up, when it's time to sing, and you know when somebody sings well, all the person's enemies are among singers. So anytime she starts to sing, you will see every other poem. She can't voice be down. Hey, 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 hey. Stupid voice. Can't voice sing well. It's envy. So this girl, all of a sudden, went to school. Everybody went to school. We came back for holidays. We went to school. Came back. This girl came back. Her dressing changed. Everything changed. She you know, could no more sing again. She was no more in the choir. All of us were concerned. Until one day she told me personally a story. She got admission in AAU. Then it was Edsu, Edo State University. She got admission. Something happened to her. One day, they were doing a singing competition. And she took permission from her campus pastor. The pastor prayed and said, don't join them. He said, ah, pastor, this opportunity to showcase my... He said, don't join them. The revelation I saw is not good. She went behind the pastor, took the form, joined the singing competition. One day, as she was singing, the girl that was to sing next to her was looking at her. And she was singing on the stage, and she noticed a python was coming from the girl. 
and entered into her. From that day, any time she wants to sing, like a snake moves around her body. So she stopped singing totally. Am I communicating? She stopped, I mean, she's married now with children and all, but she has now become an echo. No more voice. An echo. No more voice. Events. You want to appear everywhere. Event. You see born again Christians doing African idol. American idol. A, co a communication company is sponsoring them. What songs are they singing? Worldly songs. Unbelieving songs. Not Christian songs. Why? Because they want to win. And guess what? They always fail. God always makes sure they fail. So at the end of the day, it becomes a disgrace. Am I communicating? If it's not scriptural, if it's not godly, don't be there. If it's not godly, don't be there. If it's not godly, don't be there. They have no respect. Because if people see you, the Christ you carry should convince them. Not them win you over. There was a, a comedy thing they did sometime and they invited me to come there. And I was praying. The Lord said, go. I said, well, I said, change the face. When I went there, guess what? Every comedian who came up did a Christian comedy. Even the, the carnal ones that are very rotten. Before they, 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 they do anything, first praise the Lord, my spirit so a smoke out. Because they need to impress apostle. I mean, top comment. They had to do what? And I said, yes. And somebody was a popular person around me. said, do you know these jokes? They are cracking now. It's not what they plan to crack. See, but you are here. You have changed the whole atmosphere. That's what Christians should do. That's why we have the committee we have now in church. In charge of events. You can't be a comedian and claim this altar. You are, you, are, you are talking nonsense. They will take the mic from you publicly. Because if you go to politicians and you are casting Christian jokes, they'll be angry. So why should they not be comfortable with us and we are comfortable with them? Am I communicating here? Am I communicating here? This is what we have to do in the church. A wicked man can sacrifice anything just to destroy you. Saul was ready to destroy his son. Was ready to kill his son. Just to destroy David. Saul was ready to kill his own son. Just to destroy David. He, he threw that same javelin at his son. His anger was at David. There are people that can sacrifice cows, animals. They want to kill one person, a boss, 18 sitter. Because of one person, they kill 17 others. They are targeted is just one man. Because of that, they turn the boss upside down. But let me say this. Anyone that wants to sacrifice to take you, the sacrifice of Jesus take them. Wait, wait. I said the sacrifice of Jesus take them. Yeah. Put your hands up for Be on your feet. I will continue this message in Holy Ghost Convention. Be on your feet. I can't, I can't, go, I can't, I want, I have a leading for us to pray. 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 Are you ready? Look at that. Saul took a javelin and cut the javelin he meant to use for David, he casted it at his son Jonathan was ready to sacrifice his son if you are the one that will come between me and killing this man I sacrifice you verse 33 and so cast a javelin at him to smite him whereby Jonathan knew it was determined of his father to slay David it's going to be sacrifice versus sacrifice 
any sacrifice that has been done or is about to be done at the expense of my life blood of Jesus respond for me any sacrifice that has been done or is about to be done at the expense of my life blood of Jesus respond when you are shouting the blood of Jesus you are going to do that with all your energy blood of Jesus respond for me the Bible said that blood speaketh better things than the blood of Abel are you ready are you ready uh -huh. lift your right hand of fire say my father my father my father my father sacrifice that has been done all the sacrifices that have been done are about to be done are about to be done at the expense of my life at the expense of my life Lord of Jesus respond for me respond for me Lord of Jesus Lord of Jesus respond for me respond for me and I'm not on fire I said in Jesus' name. <laughs> this is the second prayer, maybe the final one. Uh -huh. Listen to it clearly. Spirit of sensitivity. Listen, listen. Spirit of sensitivity, fall on me. I refuse to fall into the trap of my enemies. Spirit of sensitivity, fall on me. I refuse to fall into the trap of my enemies. Spirit of sensitivity, fall on me. I refuse to fall into the trap of my enemies. Spirit of sensitivity, fall on me. I refuse to fall into the trap of my enemies. Are you ready? Uh -huh. the day they are planning and they are waiting for you on the road that day you will not pass that road amen. Amen. I don't like your amen at all the day they are planning waiting for you on the way you will not pass that way amen. you will not pass that way amen you will not pass that way. Amen. You will not pass that way. Amen. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father.